Hi, welcome to IT Chronicles, Ten and Tech Podcast. I'm Shane Carlson. I'm here with my co-host, Kathleen Wilson and Carlos Casanova. Hi, uh, with, us today, with us today on the podcast, we have Mark Seuss from uh, Proof Analytics, and uh, he's a the CEO there, and he came to talk to us a little bit about some of the challenges that the, you know, uh, the, the marketing teams and various corporations and the chief marketing officers are, are having uh, and what Proof Analytics does to uh, kind of help them out. Mark? Hey, good to be with you. Thanks. Yeah, Welcome so, on. so you know, what, what, uh, what the problem in the marketplace right now is that companies are spending a lot of money on marketing around the world. We're talking about $2 trillion a year. It's a lot of money, right? If you repurpose that money into some other area of endeavor, you'd make a big impact, right? So people are getting very concerned about, hey, what are we actually getting in return for this money? Now, the good news is, is that actually marketers generate a hugely positive impact on the organizations that they serve. They make it possible for companies to sell more, more stuff to more people and do both of those things faster. And that's a unique value proposition that marketing has. However, the problem is, is that in most companies, there's no way or has been no way to prove it. Right. Um, and so consequently, you get all kinds of bad stuff happening, budget cuts, people losing their jobs, things of that nature. And proof was created after about 10 years of R&D in big companies where I was the CMO or the CCO uh, to solve that problem. And, and we have, in fact, solved it. It, it. How do you guys do that? I mean, what, what approach are you taking in the market that was lacking previously? And Kind of what, you know, are you guys leveraging, you know, high degrees of automation, artificial intelligence, machine learning? I mean, what, what's, the, what's the secret sauce? Yeah, no, I think it's, it's uh, absolutely all of the above. Um, it's also a lot of collective intelligence. It's bringing uh, the power of individual knowledge across an entire organization together. It's about helping people federate their data faster than they have ever been able to do it before and with a lot less time and money investment uh, in, in doing it. So, you know, if you've got a data lake, good for you, right? You're spending a lot, of, a lot of money on that to create it and to manage it. You uh, certainly know that it has a lot of issues attached to it. This is a major issue for marketing and sales organizations and for companies at large, right? So there had to be a different way forward. And so we built that part of proof to help people do that quickly and easily. Uh, and it's something that the analyst firms, when we showed it to them earlier this summer, they were just floored. I mean, it's, it's essentially looking at data and data ownership organizationally and making a virtue out of data silos instead of trying to suppress them. But the other part to it is after you've federated all this data, you have to be able to do large scale cause and effect analysis, right? Um, to be able to say, okay, number one, how long is it taking for X to impact Y, right? One thing to impact another thing. Um, once you figure that out, okay, now we can run correlation and we can say, this is the strength of that relationship over time. And then we can say, okay, in the ripple effect of all of these relationships, the, the interlock, if you will, the, the overall framework of these relationships, what does that look like, right? So reaching out through multiple steps and multiple correlations over say 18 months, 24 months, what, is, what does something really look like? What kind of impact are you having? How long does that impact persist? Uh, you know, this now changes the whole way that you think about marketing and marketing spend, it becomes much more like an investment fund. So, so Mark, on, with, the, with that in mind, and I, I just was at a session uh, yesterday, it was more on security, but they were talking about patterns and trends and something in, you know, uh, I'm, I deal with a lot from a configuration management perspective, and I always felt that you know, the data is always there ready to tell us a story. It's a matter of whether or not we can read it, right? So right. Uh, one of the terms that came up yesterday and I'm curious if it plays into into what you were just saying is is the velocity you know and the, the trajectories is that is that basically what you're working off in a lot of the methodologies and essentially philosophies that have been used on stock trading 
systems for years. Is that sort of, I mean, I'm yeah, not saying so, it's- so, Yeah, velocity, yes. So velocity has uh, several different incarnations in this, right? All of which are important, right? So the velocity with which one thing impacts or causes another thing to change or to move, right? That's, that's time lag. That's t what we call time to impact. But it's also the velocity with which you understand that that happened, mm -hmm. right? How quickly can you gain the insight uh, into that? Uh, so yeah, velocity is, is super, super important. Um, it's one of the main reasons, for example, why human powered data analytics ultimately doesn't scale and, and has a hard time delivering, yep. right? So in the face of not only huge amounts of data to process, but an, a radically ramping demand signal from the business for insights, even if you have, you know, a hundred data scientists with all kinds of cool tools, they can't process it fast enough. And also they're trained for ultimate, you know, three decimal places kinds of precision. When what the business needs is a much more rapid delivery of practical knowledge, a practical, practical level of accuracy. To figure it, out what's working and put more resources right behind it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, ITSM actually, all my time in enterprise software is actually where I, I, I learned so much listening to CIOs talk about the same issue in their world. Right. And it informed over the last, say, 10 to 12 years, a lot of my own thinking. Excellent. So I have a, you know, I have a question because, you know, data being the new oil, right? Um, it's an area that I'm personally uh, very, very interested in, but it's like, so I'm a marketer and it's like, how would I start? Like, how do I start with something with proof analytics? Like, you know, I, I, I go and get the product is, but what, what's, you know, you know, step mm -hmm. one, maybe to step three and to where I begin to realize some initial value. Absolutely. So step one is our, you know, measuring what you need to measure is getting the data, right? Um, so to use your analog with oil, right? You got to have the raw crude before you can make all the derivatives from it, right? Whether it's gasoline or avgas or, you know, some sort of lubricant or whatever, right? You got to have the baseline material. And so in this case, that is data. That is your KPIs. That's the metrics that you're using to understand performance of all these different areas. Um, if, you, if you don't have that, then that's sort of an absolute law of gravity kind of issue. You've got to have it, right? Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, you can't really use any analytic tool, um, including proof. Um, but I think that you also have to understand how things start to you, – you have to not only have the data, you have to have a logic framework in your head – about how all this probably fits together, right? Okay. So, so it can start out as a hypothesis, right? But then you would instrument that framework, right? And then that gives you the basis for, for computing all those relationships and finding out whether you were right or whether you weren't. So, so Mark, is there, um, are, are all industries created equal? You know, are, are you seeing this challenge um, more in, you know, any particular industry from another or is it pretty much across the board? I think that it is um, across the board, but uh, having said that, the burning platform is in longer cycle, more complicated businesses, right? What we would kind of generically think of as B2B, right? Um, if you are a target selling Crest toothpaste with a coupon campaign, right? you're going to know within about 72 hours based on scanner data, if that was a successful campaign. When you're talking about aerospace, enterprise software, pharma, a lot of these kinds of extended cycle businesses, once you move past about 30 days of total cycle time, you basically go, you, you lose fidelity and you lose transparency on what the cause and effect relationships are. And so you have to compute them. And so the, the real urgent place right now is in companies like, uh, a great example would be Intel, right? Intel is not only long cycle, but they are disintermediated, 
right, from the end user. So they are selling through a whole bunch of channels. So it's very complicated. So if you, you know, if you want to understand exactly what is going on in, a, in terms of cause and effect, how do, you know, if I'm going to place bets in marketing or any other part of the business, right, and I want them to have an effect at some future moment, what does that look like? Right now, it's, it's completely intuition-based, uh, but there's too much money at stake for it to continue that way. Yeah, and my, my, my dabbles into product marketing over the years in various forms, that's, that's been one of the frustrating things is trying to understand the correlation between, you know, the, your marketing campaigns and what actually gets people to, you know, pull the trigger and buy. You know, oftentimes a single marketing campaign would be something that, you know, introduces you to the customer, but it may not be ultimately what causes them to buy. So, you know, trying to correlate what marketing actually works for what behaviors on your client side is, is tremendously valuable. And it's, it's very interesting to see the approach you guys are taking to the market. So, but uh, definitely thank you for joining us today, Mark. Uh, oh, it's exactly a pleasure. Very informative. So thank you. Um, appreciate your time and uh, wish you guys uh, best of luck in the industry and look forward to good things from you. Hey, thanks so much. Thank really you. appreciate it. Thank you, Mark. Thank Thank you, you. Mark.